Hey guys, gonna do a bit more StarCraft Brood War. This time we've got a game between Saviour of the famed CJ Intis Korean Pro League team and uh, his opponent is NSP Sharp, uh, showing us the purple Terran down here. The map is uh, Tau Cross and uh, NSP Sharp, the Terran player, is down the bottom right and we've got uh, Saviour up here as the white Zerg at the top left. So Tau Cross being a three player map. Uh, and the other start location is at the top right, which will be unoccupied for this game, so it'll be interesting. And uh, it's been a while since I did some TVZ, TVZ being uh, probably my favorite uh, matchup for uh, StarCraft Brood War. It's interesting just to compare the uh, the matchups for Terran. Terran obviously being the race that I know most about because that's the race that I play personally. I always sort of Ter Terran versus Zerg, at least for, for low to mid-level players, as being like a battle of multitasking. The person that can really uh, get the best mechanics and best macro, best micro, best multitasking uh, generally has the uh, the win. Whereas uh, Terran versus Protoss, it's a bit more down to timing. I think, uh, you know, multitasking and strategy does matter a lot more. But... Uh, but timing is very important in TVP as well as macro, just pure macro. And uh, for Terran vs Terran, it's, it's very much strategy, it's very much build orders and uh, outthinking your opponents. So uh, it's, it's kind of like a, a diverse range and it's very fun to play, to play Terran matchups for those reasons. You get something different with each matchup, so something very drastically different. Uh, taking a look at what Savior's doing here, he's sending out his uh, two drones. Uh, we have, we're not going for a spawning pool at all yet. Uh, most likely he'll use this first drone to expand here, so for the 12 um, hatch, just on time. And this uh, third drone, either he'll scout with that or he'll go build a third hatchery at a secret location. Probably more likely to scout, I think. Uh, Savior's very fond of uh, scouting with the, with the first uh, uh, drone. In the meantime, uh, Sharp is actually going for early gas, which is very uncommon in uh, TVZ. Usually you see them go for either two uh, barracks to put a bit of pressure on their opponent, or go for the quick, quick expansion with just one barracks and no gas. Uh, Savior's going to actually see the, the wall off here with his Overlord very shortly. There is a, a little gap for Zerkins to get through, but the Terrans can easily block that off as well. I'm not sure whether Zerkins can fit through this little gap here. I don't think they can though, just gonna take a guess. Uh, Savior hasn't spotted his opponent up here, he's not gonna go for a sneaky hatchery. He's got his uh, spawning pool going down here at 14 supply. And uh, yeah, just gonna wonder what happens next. The, uh, <laughs> I love the position there for the Overlord, nice. You can't see the Overlord until you get something flying. Uh, Sharp seals up the gap above the barracks. And immediately going for a factory, so this could be sneaky vultures into, uh, into wraiths. So a bit of an air build, or it could just be a, an all-out metal build, and we'll find out shortly. So this is going to be an interesting game, just in virtue of that. Really quite keen to see how it turns out, and uh, I've seen uh, Savior deal with metal builds before. He's he's beaten, uh, I can't remember the, who, what the name of the guy was, but it was in uh, Pro League a few seasons back, and uh, Savior, uh, I think, has said in interviews that he finds Zerg, uh, was, sorry, finds Terran metal builds so fairly easy to deal with as Zerg. And uh, fair enough, I mean, unless you're fantasy with your... It's newfangled vulture builds. I uh, don't really know how it's going to go down. Third hatchery, by the way, if I didn't point it out there for Savior. And uh, Sharp's own SMV is scouting out what's going on. Second factory going down. So I think we are looking... Look, looks like it's definitely going to be a metal build. Uh, there's the starport, so maybe some dropships with uh, vultures. Who knows? Uh, that could be a bit more of a, of a fantasy-style build indeed, which is... I think it's been popularized a little bit now. Uh, I haven't really been following the scene as much as I should should be, but uh, yeah, that's a guess. It's from what I know. Uh, looks like we've got a Hydralis stand going down uh, because Sa uh, Savior probably suspects what's going on. Uh, either that or his, or his plan was to go for Quick Lurkers. At any rate, uh, the SCV's been ushered out of the base. It could always come back, but it's only got five hit points, and if Savior gets any Zerglings out at all, he hasn't actually built any Zerglings. He's just gone for pure economy, which is cool. He's got the Sunken Colony, so obviously the... the, the uh, the uh, SUV won't be able to return through that, and uh, Overlord just probably going to want to have a t have a peek at the back of the Terran base over here. Lifting off the starboard, oh, I guess that's just to put the uh, control down. down. He's gone for for two lots of of uh, vultures with the with the mine upgrade, and uh, Overlord's going to see that 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 vulture leave leave the base, which is going to be cool. But the vulture is not really going to be able to make it past, not with those hydralisks and not with that sunken colony. So. Savior moving his uh, Hydralisks uh, around just to intercept anything that might be showing up over here. These drones are very vulnerable, were it not for the, the Hydralisks, but the Hydralisks, uh, of course, uh, make them a bit safer. Vulture having a look around, don't really know what he's doing here. Oh, Overlord, NSP Sharp is probably going to want to move a Marine over here to just stop Savior from seeing it. Savior's going to spot it anyway. 
So, uh, yeah, there's the dropship, and uh, Savior's probably going to see that dropship if, 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 if NSP Sharp doesn't do anything about the, the Overlords, but he's only got the one Marine, so that one Marine isn't going to kill the Overlord in time. It's going to... Savior's going to see everything that's going on, so that's going to give Savior a, a big advantage, in my opinion. First tank coming up for, for uh, Sharp now. And uh, here are the Vultures laying mines outside of the Zerg base. I don't think it's going to make a big difference. We've got an Overlord, which is probably in close... Uh, Proximity. If the uh, hydralisks just run out foolishly, I don't think Savior's dumb enough to just charge out with with hydralisks. Uh, but at any rate, the the mines are there and the overlords are nearby. There's the armory, so definitely want want that against uh, Zerg for that kind of build. Uh, Sharp probably knows that he's up against a hydralisk build, so given that uh, he hasn't really needed to invest in um, in Goliaths. But here comes the vulture drop now, and oh, hydralisk directly in the way, so picking off. The first uh, Vulture, the second one's going to go down any second now, or is it? Oh, it's making it out of there. Maybe going to take out some drones here. This could be bad for uh, Savior. Well, he's, he's got a hit on one drone. He's pulling that one back and sending it to gas just to keep it out of the, out of harm's way. A single mine goes down, but it's in range of the, the Overlords. The Hydralist able to take it up, and uh, bam, there goes the Vulture. And these, the Overlord spots all the mines already, so you've got to get the feeling that high, that uh, the Savior's looking in a very comfortable position right now. He hasn't been able to get up to get a third gas, but he's upgrading to, to a lair now. He's, uh, he's got um, range nearly done for the Hydralisks. He's got an evolution chamber out. His economy's uh, not hugely strong. He hasn't got heaps of drones, but he's got enough to afford a lot of Hydralisks, that's for sure. And uh, getting rid of the mines now. So there's the third hatchery, and uh, Sharp can't really do too much about that. But hey, look at this. Uh, <laughs> drop going down on the ridge here. This is really nice. Hydralisks moving in to deal with the tank. Uh, Sharp's really going to pull that tank back, and he does so, keeping that micro nice, and uh, he, eventually he'll be able to siege up after he gets the upgrade. Let's just check whether he's gone for the upgrade yet. No, he hasn't. Not not just yet. In the meantime, his expansion's up and running. Put down a bunker just in case. But hey, this is nice play. Oh, he has got the siege upgrade. Sorry, my, my bad for not uh, paying attention to that. Uh, and oh, Sunken Collie is going all around for Savior, desperately trying to get one of them at least in range. And this one does make it in range. Uh, it hits on the tank. And oh, the tank's just out of range of the Sunken Colony. Oh, that's terrible for Savior. Um, it, it's, Sharp's already obviously practiced building plans very well because he's got a nice uh, range there. And, uh, Savior's got really nothing to deal, deal with that because he didn't build a Mutalisk. Uh, it didn't build a Spire. He's putting one down now, but this, the, the Vultures come in behind the drone line. This is brilliant play by uh, by uh, <laughs> by Sharp. Out of range of the Sunken Colony as well, so finally the, the Mutalisk, uh, sorry, the Hydr Hydralisk arrived to deal with it. But uh, he's already killed a, a few drones. And unfortunately, Saviors had to invest in, in every rich, which little thing, the, the Spire, the the Hydralisks, and uh, replacing drones, all these sunken colonies really cost him. And uh, now he's losing drones, so that's actually really setting Savior back. In the meantime, uh, Dropship returning alive, so do, do some more work. The uh, tanks looks like, looks like they've got the, the whole area cordoned off. Uh, no problem defending the space should Savior push out. Uh, looks like we've got a drone up here to do an expansion. This could be nice if uh, Savior gets that position up here. Uh, in the meantime, he's actually picked up this expansion. That should help out his economy a little bit. But he's lost his gas here, thanks to this overlord. I uh, sorry to this uh, this tank. Uh, the spire nearly finished, but it's just taking too long, and he's he's losing the use of that gas for, for too long, which is disappointing. Uh, looks like Sharp's going to be able to spot this expansion further up with it. Oh, I like it how uh, Savior's actually sending his drone up there. Because he probably because he spotted the SCV moving with this overlord, so he didn't want to give away the fact that he was planning on expanding this. So the SCV comes up here, sees nothing, Savior's actually up in the corner. So clever play by Savior. Now uh, at the at the 11 o'clock position here, putting down a, uh, a creep colony, 